Well, everyone knows the F-150 Raptor, but this one here is Ford's smaller pickup, the Ford Ranger Raptor. Here in this special sporty off-road trim, which is kind of both, very strong appearance. What is different and how does it drive? On-road and off-road? We'll find out together here on Autogefühl. Please join us in Full HD, Full Screen and Full Length. Let's go! Isn't it funny that in the US everyone calls those ones here truck and in Europe everyone says pickup. That's funny, isn't it? This one here definitely more European pickup size and recently it was also reintroduced for the US market. Before that they said, oh, you know, it's too small for the US market, but now you can also get the Ranger in general for the US. Here you can see the Ranger Raptor gets this special masked front grille with a big Ford badging, then a contrasting silver right here, so very strong off-roadish look, very rugged and interesting. The ground clearance and weighting depth both are two inches higher than with a normal Ranger, so we can see it right here. The ground clearance is 28 centimeters, that would be like this one here, or 11 inches, and the weighting depth is here 85 centimeters or 33 inches. So that's the level where you could put this car underwater, so to say. So, all set here on the off-road sails. Then there are xenon headlamps together with some LED daytime running light. Definitely very cool in the front. By the way, here, the color for the day is Ford Performance Blue. 5 meters 36, 211 inches or 17 foot 6 is the length of the Ranger Raptor, or in general of all the Ford Rangers. That's about 20 inches shorter than an F-150. Pretty interesting. Then the wheels comes here with 17 inch with those semi off-road tires. Pretty rugged, also here with the plastic wheels, but they are painted also. So very interesting in the matte way. Also contrasting mirror caps. Then we have this side step right there. Of course, the classic pickup building style. Then this, well, sometimes they call it sports bar. Here also in a contrasting color. And interesting is that usually a Ford Ranger, you can get a single cap with a very long loading area. Then you can also get the extra cap with two plus two seating. And this one here is the double cap, which has the most interior space right here. And the Ranger Raptor is only available as the double cap. What do you think about the design here so far? A typical boxy shape here in the rear and by the way did you know that the Ford Ranger is the most sold pickup in Germany? That's also a fun fact. Let's see how the Raptor will also change or confirm that. Well then also on technology side this one here the Ranger Raptor comes with special Fox performance dampers for even more dampening performance and also off-road capability. But on the other hand, for example, both payload and towing capacity are being reduced. So maximum towing capacity is about 3.5 tons, here 2.5. And maximum payload is usually 1,200 something kilograms and here just about 550 kilograms. So that's then a little bit of a reduction as for this one. So what about the loading area? We can close it off here and also this mountain top, which is available. Let's open it right here. Oh. Surprise! We've got Larissa from Auto for you here. How are you doing? Hi, I'm fine, thank you. I have quite a lot of space in here. So she's volunteering as a model here for us today. Thank you so much. And 
Then we can even better see how we can close and open it here to the left. You close it to the right, you open it. And here we go. So, I'll set you free. Oh, you can help us with the measurements here. Yeah. Nice. So, what about the length? So this is about 1 meters 50 in length here, the loading area. And the width is, let's see. Here we go. And the width is about 1 meters, yeah, a little bit more than 1 meters 40 and a little bit closer than in the in the back area, but I think you can very well work with that. But still, it's a double cap, so loading area is not too long. By the way, you can also, of course, sit down here or, you know, when you put your motocross bikes on here, you can also drive it with the open loading area here, put the rear wheels here, for example. So, and yeah, heads off to you again. Thank you so much and please subscribe Auto Auto, Auto Free. We'll link the channel. <laughs> So whereas for the Ford Ranger in general, wait a minute, Ranger General, General Ranger, <laughs> there's a 3.2 liter diesel with 200 horsepower or 2.2 liter with 130 or 170 horsepower. But here for the Ranger Raptor, they went for the smallest diesel, for the 2 liter diesel, but then with 213 horsepower, so quite tuned to 500 newton meters of torque. And that's what we see here. And 10.5 seconds is the acceleration figure to one kilometers an hour or 62 miles an hour and thinking about our friends in the US the Raptor is not available there yet but there are rumors that you guys will get a V6 Raptor then This is the key and with the Raptor logo, but it feels pretty cheap somehow. And I think about 33,000 is a normal Ranger price in Germany, the, the base one. And this one here, 67,000 euros. Wow. And then we can also expect some more better materials on the interior. But yeah, this is soft here, okay. But then there's this hard pack. And I know this car is supposed to be rugged, but on the other hand, for such a price, I would expect a little bit more also here. And here, look, look, this this little bit wobbly here, this key for the electric seat and so on. So, hmm, yeah, not so sure about that. Then the Ford Performance Entry Badge, together with some Raptor floor mats and also aluminum pedals. And this one here, the shifting pedals at the steering wheel for this 10-speed automatic gearbox are from Magnesium. That's quite nice. Then soft touch here at the dashboard with a leather red cover. And interesting seats, special sports seats here. Rarely see those in pickup trucks. Got some microfiber in here, also with the Raptor badging. And then they use a mix of some parts are leather red and some parts are real animal. Um, they could, of course, you know, go for all leather red, but they mix it at the moment still at Ford. It's the same also for the ST or RS models. The steering wheel has a racing style clock mark at top part, the 12 o'clock mark. So indeed, here in the interior you can see this mix between an off-road and a sports style. So pretty unique, definitely. But again, material-wise and also um, if you think about the smell of the car when entering, it has a pretty strong smell, you know, like, you know, from, from the chemicals are used on the animal skin and also some of the materials which are still quite new and I don't like it when those cars smell you know that you know intensively so they have really have to work on that seating position however is quite cool you sit upright very comfortable you are king of the road yes it's not as huge as in the f-150 but definitely big enough especially for European roads I'm mean, this 86 or 6 with one and that leaves still a lot of head clearance, that's no problem. So even as tall people, you have no problem. And again, it's quite easy to get in and out. Pretty cool seating position, but you're not somewhat overwhelmed. It's pretty easy to get along with the vehicle. And the overview, you know, all around you is actually not too bad. Interior overview, sadly, the steering wheel just goes up and down. You cannot control it in reach. Then again, you can see this sporty style, also with blue contrast stitches. At the steering wheel, you can also change the volume and so on, and also something in this small digital instrument. 
analog instruments right and left. This one here, the 8-inch touchscreen with a Ford Sync 3, basically does the job here, all done via touch. And there's also this Apple CarPlay connection available, for example. You can have it right here, Apple CarPlay settings as well. I can um, soon also show that to you. Then climatization can also be accessed there, but there's still a classic climate unit here in the lower part. But this one is also quite old school, at least you can control it quite well while driving. Some rubber around those volume knobs and also for the tune. Again, this questionable build quality, this is not where this car is leading, not at all. Interesting gear shifting lever design here for the 10-speed automatic gearbox. 10-speed, really. Then in the lower part, you can also change from just rear-wheel drive to four-wheel drive and then the low gear range. And the very lower part, two USB supplies, 12 volt power supply. And then we have adaptive cup holes in the lower part. Manual handbrake, yeah, for some drifting action for sure. <laughs> and last one, at least, well, this armrest here is pretty wobbly, but split, and then reasonable space below, and even cooled. So more details to the infotainment screen here with the Apple CarPlay. Android Auto connections are also available. The thing is, however, when you have Apple CarPlay connected, you can go back to the Ford Sync system, yes, but then when you go to Maps, it automatically loads here the CarPlay Maps. That can be useful if you're only using that one here and have a big data connection to your smartphone, especially if you think about our fellas in the US. However, in Europe, those data rates are often somewhat limited. And then you might want to have the solution that you go to your smartphone map here. But when you go to the Ford Sync system, that it then would access the car internal GPS. That's not possible here. You have to unplug it and then it goes back to the normal set nav from the car. And there you have it right here. I mean, it basically does the job, but again, I think you should have the flexibility from the system. Could be also a little bit better as for the visualization. However, here with the Ranger Raptor, it's really high in price, but at least it comes with most features directly. For example, also the AC and then the system, and also here with the rear view camera that is already included. And of course, a very helpful feature. And here another close up of the instruments. Pretty fancy style, definitely, racing style, right and left. In the middle part, you have, for example, a digital speedometer, then, and you can check out fuel economy and stuff. Well, about the rear compartment of this double cap here, this will not be really specific for the Ranger Raptor, so, but general for the Ranger, and, I mean, it works with four tall adults, you know, with those sport seats, of course, maybe a little bit less legroom. It does directly fit. I do hit the seat with my knees when I sit as I would be driving, but... Again, it's still quite okay. Headroom-wise, of course, it's not a problem. And you sit quite upright in here, so it's still decently comfortable. And of course, you can also use this area here also for luggage, if you're just traveling with two in the front. You can also have a third seat here, that's standard. Then you have here some cup holders, which are not adaptive. Then in the middle tunnel, right there, there's 12 volt su supply and a 30 volt supply. So they have both right here. And what's also very interesting, so I get out, out on the other side because I want to show it to you. You can also flip this bench if you think, you know, like a toolbox or something you don't want to put on the seat, and so not to damage them, then you can put this one down. And then you can put stuff right here. But hmm. Yeah. I mean, obviously it doesn't go any flatter, but it will go probably a little bit flatter when you put some more weight on it. Um, not sure if that's really a very handy solution as for that. And the other possibility would be to flip the rear area up and then uh, you can fix it right there. And then you have some tools here or like for the emergency kit and so on. Um, or you can use this one again as for storage. At least you're a little bit flexible than here with the rear area. But as we've seen recently in the Dodge Ram for example, they had some more better solution there. Welcome to Thomas's driving part here, or the driving lounge as I call it, with the Ford Ranger Raptor. And I have been driving this car here as the Ranger Wild Track a while ago. A while ago. <laughs> so you can also tune into that review if this version is relevant to you, maybe, or more relevant to compare it. 
Here, of course, special as for the riding experience, this newly tuned diesel and also those Fox Performance dampers. And um, indeed, I mean, this car is still somewhat an off-road truck, but the dampers definitely make it stiffer. So usually in the Ranger, you would you know have more shaking up effect here, but here when I really go some slalom alike, the car doesn't shake up too much. So those performance dampers definitely hold it stiffer. And you know, maybe they are also braced for a bigger impact. So yes, you can theoretically also do jumps with this car, but I mean, come on, who does that for real? <laughs> so, and then, it is then a little bit more fun to drive with the Ranger Raptor. So you have a little bit more sporty fun, if you can have sporty fun with such a vehicle. Of course, that's still limited. The steering is pretty light and not too direct. There, the off-road character of the car still takes place um, because off-road you need you know, a little bit more steering weight and so on. But that's also totally fine. It gives you a decent overview to the rear and also to the side, so you have a good feeling for the car and indeed it doesn't feel too big, it doesn't feel too heavy, so you can still get along also in somewhat narrower surroundings. And here those shifting pedals, they are nicely done, gears react quite well, so you can always go back a gear, for example, if you, you know, let's say, um, go downhill for, for, for a while or something, and then I want to shift down some gears so you can do that. And of course, up here, uh, also shifting up if you want. So, you can really be in control. Other than that, this automatic gearbox does a good job in you know, putting through the gears. Let's see, let's cancel the route right here. Well, this roundabout here. You could also just go straight here <laughs> up the pavement and this is nothing for the car. So this is also a quite good uh, feeling. When you're going over some speed humps or so, bam, just right over them and that's it. Of course, you shouldn't drive faster um, due, to that, uh, due to that fact. But still, you know, quite fun here with this upright and high seating position. You sit well above the road, have this code overview. And a little sport there, right? So I would say, yes, this one here is more fun to drive than a normal Ford Ranger. And this is also one of the things they intended to, to have. The diesel here, by the way, it really depends on which gear you are in. When you hammer the throttle a little bit more, yes, we are just following a toilet, a driving toilet, yeah. Maybe some of you guys already noticed this. This is a driving toilet in front of us. <laughs> It's not quite often that you have a driving toilet in front of us on uh, front of you on the road, right? So yeah, always interesting live aspects. By the way, this blinking or beeping sound you sometimes hear. This is actually when you exceed the speed limit. So and you can turn it off because after a while it can get a little bit annoying, definitely. So I'm gonna go up here also over some bumpy roads here. And so far, suspension masters that very well. Of course, you have a little bit less dampening comfort than when the dampers are a little bit stiffer. You have to be in mind, uh, be aware of that. Yeah, the diesel picks up the speed quite well. So, it gives you quite good performance. Also, sound-wise, it doesn't sound too much like an old-school diesel. I like that. You know, still hear that it's diesel, yes, but you know, somewhat a refined sound, definitely. And now it also gets interesting, can I still get along very well when I'm here in a more narrow surrounding? And I have to say, actually, yeah, this is not a problem. And especially when there's altitude change, you always enjoy driving this car. Um, it's a little bit like, you know, it's, it's meant to for altitude changes. So and I think it's very important to test different driving surroundings here in our driving tests. Look again when I, for example, here now 9 degree turn, how far I have to turn the steering wheel, that's again the off-road character of this car. So, but I mean, it's still suitable here for this little bit narrower roads, no problem in easing around this vehicle here. And so far, the engine also fits quite good for that. Yeah, I mean, when you 
at one point maybe get a V6 petrol in the US, it will of course be even more fun, no doubt about that. Fuel economy, yeah, oh, this beeping sounds so annoying. It's, it's always an oh, when you drive like 32, 33 or something, it already starts beeping because you have exceeded the 30 speed limit, which we have here now at the moment. Um, the ride here with the off-road tires is also still okay. You know, sometimes you have a quite strange off-road ride and it feels too wobbly or something, but here it's definitely still okay. So, you know, they say all-terrain tires and I can, I can confirm that you can still drive them on the road. And I also have to say, the car is not exceptionally loud or something, you know, some from some older pickups or, or trucks, or you call them in the US, they feel pretty rough also as for the noise insulation. And this is actually quite well done here. We also soon approach an area where you can drive a little bit faster, but so far, you know, it handles quite silent and also relatively sporty indeed for such a vehicle. So the more I drive this version here, the more difference I definitely feel to the wild track because it's, you know, just so, so much more agile to ease around, especially a little bit more narrow surroundings, you know, acceleration again. Yeah, that wasn't even full throttle, so that's 70 kilometers an hour. So again, it was not full throttle, but um, not sure, you couldn't pick that up on camera, but the, the off-road tires here, they don't have so much grip here on, on the asphalt. And they were, you know, spinning just a little bit. You could hear like when I was accelerating. But again, even not full speed. So that's also then the decision which tires you go for. Here the Ranger Raptor comes directly with those because you might also want to off-road with them. If you just want to go on-road, yeah, it might be um, might be worthwhile thinking about a different tire choice than probably. So now we get on the motorway. Also to give you some speed right there and check out the noise insulation at higher speeds. So here we go. If you, by the way, you know, want the car to pick up the speed earlier, then you can shift back yourself. It's more about the gear you are in, actually. And then you can also give it a go. If you want to go to automatic shifting mode again, just hold the right up shifting pedal. So now, what about an acceleration on the motorway? So we go from about 70 kilometers an hour to, let's see. So that's 120, 130. Come on, yeah, I mean, it's uphill, it's uphill, okay. And that's 150 and still I mean it's not too loud in here now at about 150 kilometers an hour approximately winds pick up a little bit but still you know so I think they worked on that it's totally fine so also if you think about the longer motorway one shouldn't be a problem with that car here sorry for that truck <laughs> yeah you get a lot of comments when you say like for pickup car you have like 50 comments like that's not a tr that's not a car, man. <laughs> yeah, you know, we can also take it a little bit easier with the different definitions, can't we? After all, it has four wheels, doesn't it? <laughs> so now some lane changes at higher speeds, and again, those performance dampers hold it relatively stable. Of course, it's not a sports car, no. But again, considering this vehicle segment, it is, you know, relatively stiff and stable on the road. Now here at higher speeds, you feel, you know, like how the all-terrain tires are not really the small, suitable choice as for that. So again, if you just use it on the road, probably change the tires. But other than that, indeed they made, yeah, I mean, this, this sporty off-road mix is the one thing that is inter interesting with this vehicle. And indeed they made a car that is more road suitable besides the tires but yet again, more off-road capable. Yeah, that's, um, that's a strange mix, but that's indeed what this car stands for. Again, you can 
controlled a little bit by tire choice. I mean, I had some some acceleration here now, definitely. Um, what about some assistant systems? We can set a cruise control. That's a normal cruise control, which is built in here. There are no blind spot monitors or whatsoever in here. So it doesn't also have the most sophisticated assistant systems, also not very common in this segment here. And we can also try to reset the fuel economy and see how it, what we score later on. If you just think about a mixed fuel consumption, also with some you know, faster riding and acceleration and some something compared also to an earlier trip we had in here, and that comes something between 12 and 13 liters on one kilometers, and then you have to think about you know, you know for what reason would that be in diesel when it's not lower in fuel economy, uh, fuel, lower and lower in fuel consumption and better in fuel economy. Yeah, but. I mean, we can also hold to reset and then set the cruise control and see how that one goes. So I put it myself into the right lane and then set the cruise control and see if there's any different average then. So here we go. And again, it's, it's not an adaptive cruise control which is built in here. But it's also fine for this segment, definitely. So I'm quite surprised how stable and good it feels here on the motorway. So overall, I think that's a good result, definitely already for road driving this car. So if I have to say, very strong in the exterior as for the whole styling. The interior, yeah, that's the weak point of this car. Build quality is not good and everything looks really old style, old fashioned. It's not a new car at all this Ford Ranger generation but then again if you pay so much money for the Raptor version you do and you can actually expect definitely more from this and driving wise definitely interesting that's more road capable on the one hand a little bit stiff on the road more fun to drive so really quite cool also good performance for the diesel but yeah fuel economy will not be something where you say ah yeah let's do this and here, for example, even after we're sitting, we are yeah, about eight to nine liters on one kilometers. And that's really the, the minimum consumption. And as soon as it goes uphill, that of course raises uh, once more. So the overall average will probably always be a two digit figure here, even though you're driving a diesel. So that's it for road driving the Ranger Raptor. So guys, welcome to our off-road part and we went to neutral and then went into the 4H, so the all-wheel drive mode and we also activate the rear differential lock. So we have great traction and also when going uphill. But first we start here with some water and always keep it slow and steady. But I mean, this has here some significant wading depth, but always fun to drive through water. Always looks better from the outside, of course. And now we get uphill, and for that, you know, it's um, slowly uphill at first, but then it gets steeper, so we can go to the neutral again and go to the four low mode. Then you have the off-road gear reduction, so that's already switched. And then we can get even more traction to ground, not high speed, but more power at slow speed and also more controlled. Then the thumbs out of the steering wheel, in case you know it doesn't you know dislocate my thumbs then so you can put them on the steering wheel and now we drive uphill this suspension here the performance suspension is stiffer on road but it's also stiffer off-road and of course so it is very rough off-roading so that's the disadvantage it gets really rough in here i mean it's also rough low ground but it's very very rough then definitely to feel it so that's the downside the tires, however, they hook up great, so those off-road tires are really awesome here. So there's no traction loss whatsoever. So I'm you know, really keen on those tires in the off-road performance, not so keen on those on your on-road performance. And again, suspension, keen on the suspension, on-road performance, but not keen on that off-road. So it's, 
it's a mix, you know. So usually for off-roading you would need those tires with a softer suspension. And for on-roading you would need the stiffer suspension and with the on-road tires. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's probably the compromise they um, try to go there. So and here, you know, a lot of fun, pretty agile to drive it also off-road. Here now. This is again a situation where you know, one wheel is in the air and the other one is not and the car is really working underneath us so that's um, again really cool to look like from the outside and the car is really handling that very well. Now I felt that the wheel was touching the ground once again just slowly and steady through here. Of course when we are in this rear differential lock mode when I'm for example doing a turn here now on, on the you know on the gravels, then I hear and feel how you know how the wheels on, on, on the back are also at the same speed, and you hear how they are working at the ground. Usually, differential does the job that it's evening out the speed, you know. So because one the the outer wheel spins faster than the inner wheel, and here when you have the differential lock, both spin in the same speed. And therefore, you know, they're really working against the ground. Pretty interesting, definitely, when, when driving off-road with a differential lock. And now we're going down. There you are. Not sure if you could pick it out on camera, but really how they, how they dig in the ground because the inside wheel is, of course, not spinning at the correct speed when you, you know, would be driving the corner. So now we can activate the hills and control. There's a button for that. Activate it also while driving. And now it keeps the speed as the car was in. You maybe also hear the car braking automatically. I'm doing nothing here at the moment. And you can increase the speed just hitting the throttle a little bit and then braking it again. And then the car keeps the very speed that you put it in. So here at the moment at 10 kilometers an hour, that's still quite okay. And also we you know with some loose gravel here on the ground and those tires here, they hook up so greatly. So again, you know, they have a very open profile and they also clean themselves very fastly. So, yeah, that's actually, you know, it's, it's quite fast. We're going down here and there's no traction loss whatsoever. Pretty, pretty nicely done. So we're now getting the next corner. So definitely enjoying ourselves here in the off-road drive with the Ford Ranger Raptor. Now, with the little bit of limitation that the suspension is really quite stiff than for off-roading. So, definitely a fun experience, guys. And now to our conclusion for today with the Ford Ranger Raptor. Styling-wise, really cool in the exterior, so strong. I really love it, especially, you know, this relation to the F-150 Raptor. And it works, and it's also a little bit more agile than the F-150 because it's just smaller. On the interior, yeah, that's the downside. I mean, you have enough space, yes, but then again, the build quality is really not living up to the price. For base Ranger, yes, that's okay, but if you pay double the price in the base Ranger, I think you can expect a little bit more. Driving-wise, pretty good on the road. Well, maybe not with the off-road tires, but the suspension is really good for on-road driving. And then again, for off-road driving, the, those tires are great but suspension then is a little bit stiff for off-road driving, but overall quite interesting. Minimum fuel consumption, about nine liters on one kilometers. On the road, minimum 26 mpg US, 31 mpg UK, about that. Of course, will be a little bit worse as for the fuel economy if you hammer it a little bit more or in the mixed fuel economy. So again, that was a minimum feature. Overall, you know, this diesel here, although it's a diesel, it's quite high in the fuel consumption. Looking also forward, definitely, if it will come at the V6 in the US. And I hope you really enjoyed this tour here today, on-road and off-road. You can see the road is blocked here from us, so we have to continue on further, doing some off-road for today. See ya.